Welcome. This is Monty, and you are? I'm Carolyn. And we're the owners of DPO Surveillance Equipment. Um, by the way, we run a full-service surveillance and security equipment company. Uh, can you tell the viewers a little bit about our company, Carolyn, while I take a sip of tea so I can wake up? <laughs> okay. Yeah, we've been um, doing business for 20 years, and we're open 24-7, 365. We have lifetime guarantee and warranty on all our products. We do rentals, layaway, and purchasing. And speaking of the, uh, the rentals and the layaway programs, a lot of people like to use the, the, the rental programs as a type of try-before-you-buy program. Right. Um, what are some of the ways that the people use the rental program, by the way, just to be more specific in terms of what it means to rent from us? You rent at seven days at a time. And um, you can. This is like a try before you buy. Within the first three days, if you love the product, you can um, email us, call us, text us, and say you want to keep the item, and it's yours. Okay, so um, that's basically what we want to get out to you guys. the The idea that this is this is a uh, excuse me, but I just want to make sure we're broadcasting correctly. Um, while we do this int introduction, we actually fine-tune a few things to make sure that, that everything is working properly. But the, um, the rental program does serve as a try-before-you-buy program. And as Carolyn mentioned, uh, um, you, know, you try out the products, see if you like them. If you like them, then that's fine. You can, you can even tell us that you want to keep the product, right? So, so you can... Email us or call us and, and just tell us you like you, you like the rental product product that you got that you have and I, yeah. and you and I, you just keep it right. Yeah. So basically, you convert it into a rental, uh, convert no, the purchase. rental into a purchase, mm -hmm. right? Right. And uh, the layaway program, how does that benefit our work for people? Oh, the customers tell us how many weeks and how much every week or every two weeks or every three weeks or once a month what the amount they want us to take out uh, charge on their credit card then after that period of time they can um, we'll ship it to them and if they want a request to pay it off early they'll just tell us when uh, they want us to charge the last amount and including shipping and we'll ship it out okay so that's basically what we're offering to you guys a very economical affordable way to get your hands on law enforcement grade state-of-the-art, lifetime guaranteed and warranted products. The same exact products that we sell to our law enforcement, private investigator, uh, private intel agencies. You guys, get to get, you guys get to get your hands on those products just like the other guys, um, but at, a, at a, an affordable price or, or, or way where we can actually help you with the, the financing. Now, we have a humongous video library and, and articles directory. Can you tell the viewers anything about the... Um, the articles directory and the video library, we're doing a lot of work on those two areas. Oh, yeah, we're expanding them all the time. Uh, you can go and educate yourself if you have a little um, questions about any item or a certain subject that may include cybersecurity, cell phone security, um, cell phone hackers, et cetera, et cetera. You can go to the articles or video library. Well, the articles first, you'll learn a lot there in the video library. I mean the video demonstration library is fine. The video demonstrations right. where we demonstrate our products. Right. And some of the products include that 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 we can show you how we use them. Our trackers, bug detectors, listening devices, nanny cameras, etc. Now our anti terrorist category seems to be taking off. We're getting a lot of what we call tenders and bids from um countries all over the planet. Can you say anything about the anti-terrorist products and, and, and why that's important? Well, because there's been a lot of terrorist activity lately. We have baggage scanners, explosive detectors, and we've been getting inquiries from like Pakistan, India, Nigeria. And the uh, anti-terrorist products, uh, also narcotics detectors probably, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. So... Yeah, this this is our way, right, uh, of giving back and, and helping now keep the world safe with the with the explosive detectors and X-ray baggage scanners, right? Yes. Now, when you put your explosive detectors or or even your X-ray baggage scanners, 
into facilities. What, 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 are, what are some of the facilities where you typically may find? Oh, airports, um, government agencies. Um, Maybe embassies or embassies, post offices. Civic centers, post office. Right, the, X, the, the X-ray baggage scanners, you probably want to put that in your airports Airport, and, right. and, and post office, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're going to be scanning a large amount of yeah. what baggage and luggage pieces and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you guys, uh, make sure you understand that you, you contact us immediately if you're concerned about um, your public uh, facilities, particularly where you have a large number of people passing in and out of certain uh, areas whether it be, like Harold mentioned, airports or post offices or maybe federal buildings or something like that. The terrorists are trying to do everything, uh, as clever as, trying to be as clever as possible in terms of getting narcotics or explosives or whatever in and out of these particular areas and places. So contact us as soon as possible. And we're available around the clock, right, Carolyn? Yeah, 24-7-365, like I mentioned earlier. And you can text us for tech support or sales support or whatever as well, right? Yeah. So send yes. us a text message, and, and what, what other ways to, that they can reach us, that people reach SMS, us? SMS, cell phone. And the, the chat service? Uh, live chat. Right. All sorts of different ways, right? Mm, yep. And for those of you who don't know, we take Bitcoin as well, right? Oh, yeah, Bitcoin's a good one. So, right. Yeah. So, yeah, do, do, do your orders by way of Bitcoin, and we have lots of articles and videos on Bitcoin, but... Um, patronize, patronize our business using Bitcoin and we can save you some money because we don't have to pay merchant fees and discount fees and all that, right? We don't and neither does the other end. Right, so you guys can save some money on those purchases because mm -hmm. our, you know the cost of doing business is lower. Now this particular session um, focuses on something that we've been doing uh, quite regularly. Um, we, we, we call them cybersecurity news flash, right? Yeah, this is episode number 16 on how to protect your home or small business against hackers. Okay, now in the cybersecurity news flash, as she mentioned, we, we're all the way up to episode uh, 16, and we're talking about protecting your home and your small business. And so let's go on and get started with some of the things that, uh, that, we're that we, we, want, we want to educate you guys on. Okay, well, it looks like from election year, email leaks to smart homes that are spying on homeowners. Hacking is having a moment. With the recent revelation that American intelligence agencies have allegedly developed clandestine techniques to turn phones and TVs into their use into uh, against their users. Against their users, <laughs> hacking the unwanted intrusion into digital lives via our web connected devices has never been as crazy and hot as it is now. Okay. Um Add to the mix the general atmosphere of paranoia buoyed by the current administration's accu mm -hmm. accusations of in-home espionage. And you can understand why smart home safety um, of the IT variety might be on modern homeowners and, and or small business owners' mind. Um, what, what, about, what, what is that other paragraph there? Can you read that one? Uh, we're here to offer peace of mind with some useful practices and products that will protect your always online home office from internet evildoers at least for the next six months when the newest not yet hack proof devices enter your home or the CIA discovers how to turn stoves into surveillance equipment whatever comes first okay so let's take a look at what, what we've mentioned so far okay um, so we have, in those two paragraphs or three paragraphs, we're talking about um, the homeowner as well as the small business owner uh, and why they should be concerned, okay? Um, everything is being used as a way to um, compromise your, your safety and security, including your, your what, what did Carolyn say, your stove? Yeah. Um, well, so yeah, yeah that's so, down the line. well, don't take it for granted because a lot of the new appliances that come out, everyone wants oh, connected to the right. internet, right? Oh, I guess it can be a smart oven too. Yeah, you could have an oven that keeps track of um, what you're cooking, maybe where you, where you bought it from, and 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 a number of other things. So as you give that piece of appliance uh, access to, you know, who you are, what you like to eat, when you cook it, and all that. A hacker 
could probably hack into that and somehow and, and, and discover, you know, again, when you shop, what you buy, when you shop, whether or not you're home or not, and, and take advantage of it, right? Yep, that's kind of scary. So what are some of the best practices that people want to uh, be aware of? Uh, um... If you're a highly connected individual, 99% of right there. hackers, best practices are, we should clarify from the start, unless you're Hillary Clinton or you're some other highly connected individual, almost 100% of hackers will be going after one thing and one thing only, your money. This means targeting devices that contain your credit card information, devices that connect to devices that contain your credit card information or devices that could prompt you to give your credit card information. Okay, regardless of their goal, perhaps mm -hmm. they should just want your mother's prize pecan pie recipe. Uh, the steps to thwarting would-be hackers remain the same. First, keep your devices up to date. Mm -hmm. And what else? Oh, your security updates. While well, seemingly a mundane process full of the most sleep-inducing legacy. Legalese. Legalese making sure each of your online connected devices are running the most recent version of the firmware is the first and best defense against your intrusion. Okay, so we're going to be giving you guys some very hands-on practical tips here. Um, okay, keep the firmware up to date. Whenever the makers of the routers, for instance, that you buy, Netgear, whoever it is, um, Cisco, I don't care who it is, make sure that you contact them or that you go online or, that you, or, or, or go into settings and make sure that that router firmware is up to date. What do you think about that? That's a very simple um, simple method, but some people don't think about that. No, people don't do it. Uh, let's see. And then what about moving right along? What else? Hackers exploit inf infinitesimally. Infinitesimally, yeah. Small flaws in code to leverage control over devices or gain access to information. The developers work to address these cracks with subsequent updates, which is why you want to find a multiple of frequent or regularly scheduled and somewhat minor updates for your favorite apps and devices. Okay, once a security risk has been deprecated, hackers target users employing older firmware versions while heading to the lab to work on the latest round of code. So basically what Carolyn is saying right here is um, hackers are always looking for the advantage and um, you, 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 you guys can't help out the hackers. You don't want to help, help out the hackers because they have little scripts and different things that, that peruse the internet looking for uh, devices that are connected to the internet and what type of version do you have. What, you know, whether or not you, you're, you're updated or not, what type of computer you have what type of operating system you have, what type of device you have, and, and they're probing all the time for, uh, for flaws and such, okay? Yeah, in addition to keeping firmware current, regularly updating your passwords, that is very important, is a proactive defense against smart home hacking. Always change your password. Don't make it easy, one, two, three, four, five, six. Hackers who are after information, financial or otherwise, want to sit on your network for as long as possible. This means they look to leave a small digital footprint cover, footprint and cover every clandestine action that they take. By routinely updating the entry codes to your password protected products and services like Wi Fi network networks, you can lock out any interlopers who have taken root in your systems. Uh, these protective procedures certainly aren't the most exciting activities of your day, <laughs> we hope. So it begs the question, how, how, you re how will you remember to enact them? Um, what else can we co cover before we discuss that? We recommend employing TOTIS. TOTIS? Uh, TOTIS? Okay. Okay, TOTIS is the name of a product, yeah, actually. Huh. It looks like Todoist, or, or T-O-D-O-I-S-T. I think that's probably Tau, let's, let, let's say Tau, Tauist. Free premium features cost $29 a year. Free premium feature, features. Yeah. A top-rated to-do list app with any easy-to-use interface that will help keep you up to date with what's on your plate for months or years in advance. 
Better yet, toadist pairs. Uh, to doist. Let's say to doist. Pairs with smart home, smart home hubs like Google's Home and Amazon Echo, so you can have today's tasks. Like check for an Alexa update, read to you in a soothing synthetic voice. So this is a practical solution, and this is what they say they have a free version and a premium version for only thirty dollars a year. It looks like it'll work with your Google Home or your Amazon Echo. And it will literally cause either of those voice recognition technologies to prompt you, uh, remind you to update the firmware on this or that device. Right. So you can't beat that. It's going to yeah. tell, you know, um, uh, Alexa or Google Home uh, technology to, 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 to do certain things that you wanted to do, like update the firmware or something. <laughs> Um, what else can we talk about? As for keeping track of your ever-evolving array of passwords, apps like Dashlane, free, and $40 for premium features. Keeper is free, or $10 for premium features. And 1Password, number 1Password, free, $10 for premium features. We'll securely store your information and keep it protected even if you lose your smart device. So we're giving you an abundance of things to work with, okay? Carolyn just mentioned Dash Lane. That's an app. Uh, you, you could do the free version or the $40 version. Uh, Keeper, do the free version or pay $10 for the premium features. And 1Password, that's the number one password. They got a free version and a $10 version. Um, th these are called password managers. So, so for those of you who, who think 1234 is complicated, uh, <laughs> let the app do it for you. <laughs> and, and maybe... Uh, Take also take a look at Dashlane. Um, that that one is another one, right? Yeah. If, if desired, our recommendation is Dashlane, which, if desired, will automatically generate new passwords for your connected services, and with the premium upgrade, allow you to back up your information to the cloud and sync passwords across devices. Now, to be honest with you, uh, me and Carolyn, we really don't like to give out our passwords to password managers. Um, but we recommend for those who are like completely stumped and, and, and don't know or don't want to be bothered with having 20 passwords for, you know, different applications or whatever, because we, uh, you know, we're security professionals and we've been doing this for 20 years. So we don't have a choice but to get complicated passwords or to manage them, manage them, manage them ourselves. Because sometimes when you centralize password management with an app or a program and, and if they manage 20 passwords for you, Someone could very well, oh, hack unfortunately, that. hack that yep. one. Yeah, so trust everything. Eventually, you guys, even if you start off with a password manager, realize, look, I got, need, I need a system where I can put all my passwords, mm -hmm. um, keep them myself, and don't give them out to a certain company. <laughs> you know, you know, the FBI, the NSA, those guys are pretty good at compelling those companies to hand over critical information whenever they're supposedly a quote unquote. Um, national security related issue or whatever they want to make up um what do you think about that yeah you can only trust yourself that's how i see it you know it's hard you know it's hard to be trusting everybody else okay what about moving right along moving right along whenever possible you want to use multi-factor author uh, authentication for your devices with multi-factor authentication, users are sent a secondary auto-generated password via email or text before they can access the desired product or service. Multi-factor authentication <laughs> is far superior to standard password protection. To the the auto-generated code is different each time, and a hacker would not have access to many of your accounts to take advantage of that. That's a great idea. Now we use that actually. Mm -hmm. When, yeah. when, when you log into um, certain accounts, you get a text message, right? Mm -hmm. And unless you have the phone, unless the hacker or somebody has that phone, they're not going to get that secondary PIN code or password to get into whatever right. account, right? Right. So that, that, that's a, a, a very secure uh, level of protection that you guys want to take advantage of, okay? So you have to have... Not only the original password or whatever, but you have to have the device, your, your cell phone or something, that gets that text message. And if you don't have that, then, of course, you don't get into 
uh, either mm -hmm. your online banking or your Facebook or whatever it is that you use the uh, the multi-factor authentication um, uh, feature on it. Uh, finally, make sure you keep your devices separated. Most modern Wi-Fi routers offer the ability to set up multi, uh, multiple networks. As the majority of hackers are looking to access your finance, financial information, and you are looking to do so via a weak point in your Wi-Fi, and I'm sorry, they're, they're, looking to, they're looking to access a weak point in your Wi-Fi network. It only makes sense to keep your less secure Internet of Things products like your Wi-Fi connected coffee machine on a separate home network from the from the devices that contain your most mm. uh, important information like your laptop or your or your uh, your phone so basically they're saying that um, you can have two routers you can have two networks your children for instance can play around on one network you know for, for that one router the games right the games or whatever important and then if you're going to do your financial banking or whatever right then you want to probably have a separate network or router for that right mm -hmm. Yep. So, so that that's very important, you guys. You you don't have to just put everything on one network if you don't want to. to keep the kids' stuff separate, just like yours. Um, what else we want to Products make them aware of? Protection. Of? Humans only have so much capacity of virtual vigilance. That's why the smartest among us have designed semi-sentient services that require neither sleep nor sustenance to serve our smart home security. Here are your top options of automated protection and descending order of device stylish. Stylishness, <laughs> the Norton Core, the Kuho, and the Bid Defender Box. Okay, so we're going to cover the Norton Core, Kujo, I think it is, K uh, C U J O, and the Bit Defender Box. Okay. What about the those? What about those items? Well, those products all share a number of security features like antivirus and anti-malware protection and protection of all connected devices. The Cujo focuses more on machine learning, discovering how your connected devices behave and blocking actions that stray from that path. The Norton Care is a security... Core. Oh, the Norton Core is a security system slash Wi-Fi router hybrid that looks something like a geodesic home but stylish. The core in addition to promising high speed Wi-Fi service interfaces no, places a premium on being both family friendly and user friendly offering easy interfaces and a host of parental controls in addition to security protocols for your connected devices. The core also offers users a security score granting suburban dads a status measure about which to be competitive. Mm -hmm. Okay, for our money and yours, the best, uh, the best of the best is defend, uh, Bit Defender Box. So we're not really endorsing any one of these, but you know we, we're trying just trying to make you aware of the fact that the uh, you got the Bit Defender, you got the Norton Core and Cujo. Okay, um, speaking of the Bit the Bit Defender Box. The simple to set up box constantly monitors every d device that connects to your home network, be they villain, visitor, or valued family member, and it offers a one-click solution sent directly to your smart device to instantly boot any nefarious network types. Additionally, the box, uh, via a year-to-year -year subscription, will outfit every device on your network with antivirus software that will stop malware in its attempts to, 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 to take root. Better still, the box has your back when you venture out into the real world. Box runs all your home network connections through a VPN, otherwise known as a virtual private network, to protect you from the bad actors and plague-level viruses that may be lurking on a public Wi-Fi network. The box will identify any devices it determines may be compromised and isolate them from the other network connected devices and employ real-time machine learning to address the new and different threats. Finally, the Bit Defenders box will keep on top of the best practices we outlined above, checking the strength in your, of your passwords and the firmware versions of your various devices, as well as identifying any other backdoor methods hackers might employ to grab your info. 
It's like the wild, wild west out there on the world wide web. So give yourself a chance by being prepared. And remember, never trust anyone claiming to be a Nigerian prince. Okay, so that's, that's <laughs> it for those three recommendations in addition to the other recommendations uh, that we spoke of um, for protecting your, 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 particularly your home office. I know, I know a lot of you, like us, probably have a small business and, and you combine your, your home and your home office and everything pretty much. And um, so machine learning is one term we, we throw out there. Machine learning basically means computers are looking at and learning how you work, what you do, and how to recognize what the hackers and, and, and the different um, uh, bad guys are doing in terms of how to get into your network and all that. And it's learning all those traits and, and, and whatever, and it's, and it's, 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 it's learning and to, to better give you the defenses that you need to keep your network safe. So in the future, that's going to be very important in terms of how machines learn what we do, what we don't do, and how we how we how how we react, and and, and they're going to be playing more of a more more of a, a, a critical role. The virtual private network just basically means that it's a secure network, basically that you can set up um, to further give you uh, highly secure. Uh, communications, emailing back and forth, texting back and forth, calling back and forth. It's almost like an internet within the internet. And these devices that we that we mentioned, a number of them look like they offer the um, the VPN or the virtual private network. So read the article. We're going to try to put as many links in these articles as possible so you can follow up on it. But Google it or, or look on YouTube for VPN or virtual private networks and see what that's all about. That's very important, you guys. So um, what else can we talk about here Um that people may be interested in. Uh, let me see. Laptop containing Trump Tower plans and Clinton email probe stolen from security services agent's car. Secret. Oh, my God. Yeah. This is insane. Laptop containing Trump Tower plans stolen from secret service agent's car. I don't know why it's been left in the car in the first place. Mm. Report laptop containing Trump Tower plans stolen from secret service agent's car. Redundant. A brazen thief in New York City stole a Secret Services agent laptop computer that reportedly contained the Trump Tower's floor plans, information about the Hillary email probe, and national security information. The theft from the agent's car in Brooklyn occurred Thursday morning, according to the New York Daily News, which cited police sources in a story published Friday. The car was parked in the driveway of the agent's home. The, aid, the addition to the laptop of the reported sensitive documents and an access key card belonging to the agent were stolen. Oh, so what do you think about that? I don't think these people are protecting our, anybody's information. If you just leave it in someone's car. Yeah, I guess we have to wonder. These are secret agent, uh, secret like, service people, right? Yeah, you can at least put it in the trunk where you can't see it. Hmm. So this is the same Donald Trump that was accusing uh, the Obama administration of having lax security, right? I guess there's only one Donald Trump, fortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, you guys, we, we, we really need to, you know, make sure we understand that despite all the rhetoric that we heard about Donald Trump and, and, and how much emphasis he's going to put on making things better, it looks like these are, are, are some definitely you know, wide gap security uh, lapses that occurred. Let's see what else is going on here with this story. The agent told investigators the information on the computer could compromise national security. Oh, boy, that's great. It's a very big deal. A police source told the newspaper, which noted that the Secret Service, whose responsibilities include protecting President Donald Trump and his family, is heavily involved in the investigation. There's data on there that's highly sensitive, the source said. They're, they're scrambling like mad. Um, the story that the information on the, um, the Daily News story said that information on the stolen laptop includes evacuation protocols and floor plans of Trump Tower, which contains the Manhattan residence of uh, President Donald Trump and the place where his wife Melania wow. and their son Barron still live full time. Jeez. Uh. 
Secret Service in a statement said confirming the laptop theft was issued after the news posted its story and said agency issued laptops contain multiple levels of security. Yeah, right. Including the full disk encryption and not and are not permitted to contain classified information. Yeah, I don't believe that for a minute. Mm-hmm. The case came to light a day after it was revealed that the Secret Service is investigating allegations that two of its agents assigned to protect one of Trump's grandsons took selfie photographs with the eight-year-old as he slept. Oh, boy. And on March 10th, a 26-year-old man was arrested after jumping the fence at the White House and getting close to the White House itself. He was on the grounds for, I think, 16 minutes, which is a long time, while carrying two cans of mace and a letter to Trump he had written. Oh, I wonder what that letter Hmm. said. Two cans of mace. That's interesting. Maybe he was going to use one of them. Or both of them, yeah. (laughs) Wow. Um, It was reported on Friday that the man, Jonathan Tran, was on the White House grounds for 15 minutes and possibly more before he was spotted and detained by a Secret Service officer. I thought that they had a sharpshooter on top of the roof, but I guess... Mm, They should have. It was also reported the laptop thief, who may have gotten to the agent's home in an Uber, was seen on surveillance video walking away from the agent's car with a backpack. Items including coins and a Bag carrying a Secret Service insignia were later recovered, but the laptop remains missing. Okay, that part is interesting. Oh, a boy. bag, items including coins in a bag carrying Secret Service insignia were later recovered. Uh, kind of makes you mm-hmm. wonder whether or not he was impersonating the Secret Service or whether or not this was one of the items that were actually stolen. If he's impersonating the Secret Service then you wonder, you know, just how much access he could have gotten to other areas without anyone questioning whether or not he was actually Secret, secret Service or not. Yeah, 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 because I've seen you don't need Secret Service insignia to break into a car. But no. He be going into other buildings. Right? Sounds like he was very yeah. well prepared just in case someone questioned him, maybe. Yes. When contacted by CNBC, the New York Police Department referred questions about the case to the Secret Service. The U.S. Secret Service can confirm that an employee was a victim of a criminal act in which our agency issued laptop computers, uh, a- agency issued laptop computer was stolen, the agency said, before noting the multiple levels of security and encryption in its laptops, as well as their lack of classified information. An, in- an investigation is ongoing and the Secret Service is withholding additional comment until the facts are gathered, the, the agency said. The Secret Service requests anyone with information regarding this crime, to please contact the New York Police Department and the U.S. Secret Service New York Field Office. Mm-hmm. Well, what if we just publish this all on, on 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 Facebook, just to let these geniuses know that you know if you're going to be responsible for this type of um, uh, task, protecting the United States President and his wife and their children. It, that should be taken seriously, right? Jeez, yep. The agency is also probing claims that last week two agents assigned to protect Donald Trump the third began taking selfies with him as they drove him from Manchester County, Westchester County, New York to Manhattan. The president's grandson woke up and as a source framed it, freaked out, according to a story about the probe published Thursday by MotherJones.com. Upon return to Manhattan, he shared the experience with his mother, Vanessa Trump, hmm, who relayed her concerns to his father, Donald Trump Jr., Mother Jones' story said. The issue was quickly escalated to top management of the Secret Service. The two agents were ordered to report to the Secret Service office for professional <laughs> responsibility in Washington, D.C. It well, sounds like they got reprimanded. Yeah, it sounds like the people were just having a whole lot of fun. Not yeah. realizing the implications of taking selfies and yeah. and putting all these things on personal portable devices, more than likely, where That's they can be stupid. compromised, right? Yep. Our, our source told Mother Jones that the agents do not face a criminal probe, but instead questions about whether they abandoned their post while protecting the boy. Oh. Well, that's kind of important. Yeah. yeah. A Secret Service spokesman wow. emailed a statement to CNBC on Friday when asked about that probe. The U.S. Secret Service is aware of a matter involving two of our agents and one of our protectees, the agency said. Our Office of Professional Responsibility will always thoroughly review a matter to determine the facts 
and to ensure proper long-standing protocols and procedures are followed. Ay, ay, ay. Um, what the Secret Service could would caution individuals to not jump to conclusions that may grossly mischaracterize the matter. Um, Secret Service agents around the country are dedicated to protecting those under their charge. I don't believe that at that all. That sounds like a bunch of BS. <laughs> no, you um, should never trust all of them. You have to question them. Yeah, it looks like instead of being vigilant and, and not making exceptions, it looks like these guys may be contributing yeah. to right. particular situations where the, um, uh, the president's family hmm. can be subjected to who knows what. Um, so we're going to move to, um, to, 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 to this third uh, particular uh, section here. There's a cybersecurity leader. His name is Howard Smith. He died. Um, Howard Smith, yeah, he died. Um, and we're going to remember him by way of this article. News appeared on Thursday, the 2nd of March, that Howard Schmidt had passed away following a long battle with cancer. Schmidt was 67 and was one of the most highly regarded cybersecurity leaders in the history in the industry. A former Air Force veteran who served in the Vietnam War, he held positions in both the private and public sectors, most prominently in the U.S. government. Uh, his move from the Army to cybersecurity included 12 years serving as a special agent for the United States Army Reserve as a research professor at Idaho State University and on the boards of multiple vendors and security organizations. He was also CISO, um, I think that's um, Security Information Security Officer or something like that, of eBay and Chief Security Officer of Microsoft and serves, served as Chief Security Strategist for the, United, for the U.S. Search Partners Program for the Department of Homeland Security. So this was a, a, wow. a big shot, um, Howard Smith. Uh, what else? He was recently working with Ridge Global. Chairman Tom Ridge said in a statement, Our nation has lost a rare gem. Howard Schmidt was a leader on digital security before most people even knew what a cyber attack was. His expertise was sought by U.S. presidents on both sides of the aisle as well as presidents and CEOs of some of the most influential brands in the world. Schmidt was the former White House cybersecurity advisor to President Barack Obama and George W. Bush. He also had been a terrific leader and visionary in the security world and was not afraid to share perspectives and to be provocative. He served his country with dignity and was always proud of that service as well as his contribution to the security industry and thinking he will be missed. Okay, so that's Howard Smith. Um, a lot of the old school, I think, cybersecurity experts probably know uh, of, of Howard Smith. Not, not everyone, especially you know, a lot of the younger millennials or whatever. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's uh, in honor of the late, great Howard Smith. And um, so you guys probably want to... Um, just remember for that, that that individual is a leader in the industry, and uh, as mentioned in the article, he will be missed. Um, number four, we, we, we talk a lot about Bitcoin and blockchain. Uh, matter of fact, we've been early investors in mm -hmm. Bitcoin and blockchain, and we, we, we actually use Bitcoin on the website, right? Yes, we do, and you can buy your items from us with Bitcoin. You don't have to pay transaction fees or have anybody else involved with your transaction. Let's say a bank, a second person, third person, very um, secure. Now, private. we're early evangelists. Uh, ever since the last seven years or so, we've been involved with Bitcoin and, and studying and researching the blockchain and all that. And it looks like the, the blockchain particularly can play a major role in securing um, supply chains, whether it be food, whether it be uh, anything that you basically want to put on a network and, and, and transmit from one place to the other and make sure it's secure, make sure it can't be changed, make sure it's, it, it's communicated quickly and fast, in a fast manner. Um, but it looks like, yeah, every industry is a, is a candidate for implementing blockchain and uh, the uh, cybersecurity field or industry is no exception. And when it comes to IOT, otherwise known as um, Internet of Things, it's, it's, it's no different. What can we tell people about um, how the cybersecurity industry is taking a look at, at um, the blockchain? 
<laughs> oh, it's blockchain is being hailed by some not only as a transformational technology for business, but as a new frontier in cybersecurity. In particular, blockchain is seen as a technology that could potentially manage device identity in relation to securing the Internet of Things. However, at the same time, there are many distractors, detractors who question how useful and holistic blockchain is as a cybersecurity tool. During the spring virtual conference session, that speakers will take a deep dive into blockchain technology and cut through the hype and discuss what it really means for cybersecurity and the Internet of Things. Uh, key takeaways from that conference include understand blockchain technology and how it works, discover how blockchain is being utilized in organizational transformation, evaluate the pros and cons of blockchain for cybersecurity, understand the potential application of blockchain to IoT security, register before the 29th. Today is the 19th, so you got a, a little over a week. Days. Yeah, um, March 29th to attend the Info Security Magazine Spring Virtual Conference. Um, hmm. Now, WikiLeaks has been in the news to a great extent. Um, and Wiki, WikiLeaks is 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 is, is is on everyone's mind, particularly because it looks like um, the CIA has been caught red-handed um, possessing possessing technology and taking advantage of that taking advantage of the technology and 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 uh, exploiting uh, every conceivable vulnerability in the same appliances and different things, uh, phones, devices that we use every day. Now, just so you know, Carolyn, and you guys out there, when you have a vulnerability that exists in your smart TV or your phone or your laptop or your iPad or whatever, the industry really needs to know about it because that typically means that hackers and different people can get access to our information. They can compromise our bank accounts, checking accounts, or um, personal information, right? Oh, yeah. But this article illustrates how WikiLeaks is telling us now that not only did the CIA and the NSA know about the vulnerabilities, but they actually took advantage of them themselves instead of, rep instead of reporting them. So let's take a look at, um, starting with the title, let's take a look at some of these particulars of this, okay? Oh, it says, Wikile WikiLeaks, CIA secret exploits target car hacking smart TVs. WikiLeaks has released thousands of documents that it claims show how the CIA can break into smartphones, computers, and other connected devices, including smart TVs. The trove which Lee WikiLeaks is dubbing Vault 7 purports, purports to be a massive archive of CIA material consisting of several hundred million lines of computer code that's been circulated among former U.S. government hackers and contractors in an unauthorized manner. One of them has provided weeklies with portions of the archive. Wow. Okay, this demonstrates conflicting challenges yeah. faced by the security developer community, said Vikram Kapoor, co-founder and CTO at Lacework, a Mountain View, California-based provider of cloud security solutions, by email. On one hand, this has scary impl impl implications for individual privacy rights and shows how extensively some of the systems can be hacked. On the other hand, it demonstrates how hard it is to manage security for insider risk and cloud workloads today um, for organizations. Most centrally, the documents show ways that the agency allegedly, allegedly can hack mobile phones and can bypass the encryption used by messaging services like Signal, WhatsApp, and Telegram. Mm -hmm. After penetrating Android phones, the CIA can collect audio and message traffic before encryption is applied, we can leak said. So we're under the impression that we have secure devices, uh, messaging services. Um, oh, welcome, Vanessa Newman. Oh, hi, Vanessa. Oh, Vanessa. Yeah. I know. Hi, Vanessa. We know Vanessa. She uh, <laughs> actually did our, she's our manicure pedicure yeah. person. Now she's moving on to bigger and better things since she graduated. Um, <laughs> congratulations to you, Vanessa. Um, so this particular, uh, what, what else do we want to add to that article? Okay, the purported intelligence documents also include detailed information on CIA-developed malware dubbed things like Assassin and Mendoza. And the documents point 
to an entire alleged unit in the CIA is devoted to hacking Apple products. Furthermore, WikiLeaks alleges that the CIA is proven here to have deliberately failed ooh, to disclose security vulnerabilities and bugs to major U.S. software manufacturers, choosing instead to leverage them for their own ends. Now, this is very important. We talk about this a lot. The government keeps giving us you know, a lot of lip service about <laughs> let's work together, you know. You, you report vulnerabilities and we'll report vulnerabilities and we'll find them, we'll patch them, we'll keep the terrorists out, we'll keep the hackers out, we'll keep the drug smugglers and everyone from taking advantage. But as we're learning, that's not what's happening. Microsoft, Apple, Google, IBM, whoever, Okay, they're, they're, they're not being helped by the CIA or the NSA when there's vulnerabilities in those products and those services or whatever. And instead of disclosing them, our government agencies are saying, oh, oh, you know what, let's take advantage of the vulnerabilities. Let's do some snooping. Let's find out uh, about the American citizens and that we're, you know, supposed to be protecting. Let's, let's, let's find out what they're doing and who they're talking to. And uh, this is actually eroding the confidence of the American citizenry because we we want our government to be on our side as compared to be a, you know to being against us, right? No, you can't. T- well, as far as I'm concerned, you can't trans- trust the government. No. So this is really why a lot of people are turning to be anti-establishment. They're turning to yeah, be. I don't blame them. Um, you know, the type of people who are going to trust and who have to second, we have to second guess what these guys are saying. So if you think repatriations and, and people having dual citizenship is going up now, you know, mm-hmm. this, this is going to make it even worse, right? Mm-hmm. On a darker front, the documents claim that the CIA maintains remote hacking programs to turn various connected devices, including smart TVs, into recording and transmitting stations with the feed sent back to the secret, ser- the, the secret CIA servers. Hmm. Hmm. Other capabilities would permit the CIA to engage in nearly undetectable assassinations. <laughs> assassinations, WikiLeaks said. One document lays out actions that the CIA allegedly took to infiltrate and take over vehicle control systems in cars and trucks. Well, that's kind of interesting because if you're the CIA and there's a vulnerability in Hondas or Toyotas uh, driving systems in the car and you hack into mm-hmm. it, like we've seen with the Jeep Cher- 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 Cherokee situation a, a year ago or so, um, you take over the brakes, you take over the steering, you shut off the engine, you disable the brakes or something or, or increase the speed and someone could literally get killed, right? Yep. So how do we know that it was a bad guy or a crook when in actuality it could be our government agencies, right? Supposedly the good guys, yeah. Yeah. So, um, again, you know, taxpayers, we're paying for a rogue government, (laughs) a government that's completely out of control. They're they're seeing vulnerabilities. They're seeing backdoors, um, and they're not reporting them. And on the contrary, they're taking advantage of them. Taking advantage of their power. Of their power. Many of the vulnerabilities cited in this tool set are well known, said Andrew McDonald, president at Aztec, a San Francisco based security consulting company, via email. Smart TVs, old Android phones, such as the president's, unpatched routers, and a host of other devices have known vulnerabilities that are not exclusive to the CIA. These implementations may have been exclusive, but that doesn't mean only the CIA had exploits. If genuine, there are likely some proprietary vulnerabilities or zero days in there. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, secret backdoors and software, whether intentional or based on exploit, make everyone less safe. There's no way to control who uses them. So, you know, this really illustrates we all have to be vigilant. If we discover a defective product in our possession, you don't just keep that a secret. You notify mm-hmm. the manufacturer. You give them the opportunity to fix that product. Otherwise, you know, we, we, you, you could be the one with a, a defective product that could be a vehicle, could be an um, oven that, you know, um, actually mm-hmm. turns on or doesn't turn off or, or expels gas or, or overheats or something and causes the house to be burned down. You never know what could happen 
when you, when we when, when we're not uh, vigilant in terms of making sure that these def defects, basically their defects, make sure that they're taken care of. Uh, the source of the documents were not named. No news organization has verified the documents authenticity. And the CIA has said that it will not comment. <laughs> yeah, right. However, a former intelligence officer told the New York Times that some of the code names for CIA programs and organization chart and the description of CIA hacking base appeared to be genuine. Edward Snowden, meanwhile, has weighed in via Twitter, saying that he too believes the information to be real. Program and office names such as JQJ, IOC, CRIP, Series are real. Only a cleared insider would know them, he tweeted. Oh, boy. Okay, so this is very important. Um, when you start naming names, uh, these various citations give you the impression that this is inside information, this is real information. And, again, you have to be an employee or someone who's very, very close to these agencies to be able to report back and, and tell us uh, about these names and these programs. The initial release, which WikiLeaks said was only the first part of the document collection, includes 7,818 web pages with 943 attachments. The documents are from the CIA Center for Cyber Intelligence are dated from 2013 to 2016, and the, and the sum total of, of the cache is the entire hacking capacity for the CIA. So it looks like the CIA is totally incompetent if they're letting anyone get access to the total cache of their entire hacking capacity. That means all of the tools, that means the billions of dollars um, that we taxpayers are funding these agencies with is basically turned over to everyone in China, everyone in Russia, and Yugoslavia, and Romania to take advantage of. And, and when these guys dump this information onto the internet, that means for the for for the price of getting online, you know, which basic which is basically nothing, you can get access to this this information. You can exploit it. You can write scripts of your own. You can do all sorts of damage. Um, what else can we add to, to this? Let's see. WikiLeaks said it was not releasing any cyber weapon code itself until a consensus emerges on the technical and political nature of the CIA's program and how such weapons should be analyzed, disarmed, and published. Fred Wilmot, CEO at Packet Sled, told us that the ethics of the situation don't stand the CIA in good stead should the documents prove to be legitimate. There's nothing to debate over the security, creation, and proliferation of cyber weapons, he said. However, there is there is plenty to debate about privacy, audit, and transparency for Americans when it comes to their homes, their personal data, and their required level of cognition necessarily to protect themselves from any of the cyber weapons in today's connected world. So uh, we gave you guys a lot of information. Uh, we started off, let's see, we're, we're 52 minutes into that. Yeah, um, we gave you guys a lot of information. We typically like to do, a, do an hour's worth of information, and it looks like we did it. Um, we have an abundance more, which we're probably going to save for the next uh, cybersecurity news flash. Uh, next time, we'll probably cover secure messaging apps riddled with security flaws. That that's one topic. Um, another one might be Trump and his Android phone putting national security at risk, says lawmakers. So we're going to talk about how President Trump and his Android phone mm -hmm. is not doing us any favors in terms of protecting. Um, him or, or, or the critical information that we trust mm -hmm. him with. Uh, NIST gets new cyber powers under House bill. NIST is, stands for what? National Institute of Standards and Technology. Okay, so NIST is finally going to get, may, maybe they'll get some teeth and maybe they'll be able to actually um, go after these agencies who aren't securing our information, like the IRS and a number of others who've actually leaked a lot of information to hackers and such. Let's see what happens. We'll, we'll, we'll cover that. Uh, then we're going to talk about the, the night zombie smartphones took down 911. Okay, mm -hmm. what's that all about? You have to tune in and find out. Next time. Next time. And then what else we're going to cover? 
we're going to cover, let's see. Um, okay, in addition to that one. One million stolen Gmail and Yahoo accounts for sale on the dark web. Coming up next time. So you can find out whether or not yours was included, okay? Because that's a lot. One million, right? Yeah. Okay, so yours may be included. So you go, so tune in and find out. So we're going to wrap up uh, this particular session. What do we call this session today? Uh, let me see. Episode number 16, Security, Cybersecurity News Flash, How to Protect Your Home or Small Business Against Hackers. So this is, um, we're going to conclude this session here. We appreciate it when you guys join us, uh, you also, Vanessa, and these sessions. And um, if you have any need for what, bug detectors, trackers? Bug detectors, tractor, tractors, <laughs> bug detectors, trackers, listening devices, uh, IP cameras, IP nano cameras, uh, anti-terrorist. Yeah, come to, come to see us. And, uh, yeah, do your rentals, do your layaways, contact us around the clock, take advantage of the lifetime guarantees and warranties. Right. Take advantage of our 20-year experience and expertise. And if you want to learn about uh, anti-terrorist products or buy them. Yes. Contact us immediately. Yes. Carolyn talked about Pakistan, Nigeria. India. India, Saudi Arabia. Could be Paris. We haven't gotten anything from Paris yet. Yeah, but if you're in France, Paris, France, where the attackers already attacked, and you, yeah. you know, you're, you, you need to hurry up and contact us. Mm -hmm. um, we'll help you out. We'll help you out. So, yeah. as we like to say at the conclusion of every single video, podcast, articles, what do we say at the end? You can invite a friend, enemy, associate, neighbor to come and join us. Right. So uh, you guys have a great day, and we appreciate it when you join us in these sessions. And like we always say, like Carolyn said, share it with anyone and everyone, okay? So you guys have a great day. Thanks. Thank Bye. Thank you. Bye.